On June 4, the defense forces on the front line eliminated 1,280 Russian invaders. Thus, the Russian Federation's losses in manpower during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine reached 513,700 people. Dozens of enemy military equipment and weapons were also destroyed, including 40 artillery systems. Ukrainian soldiers destroyed 12 Russian tanks. Also destroyed were 16 armored combat vehicles, 40 artillery systems and 3 air defense systems. Ukraine has destroyed two of Russia's Panzer S-1 air defense systems, officials said. Ukraine has been hunting Russia's network of air defenses such as the short-range Panzer to counter Moscow's continuing efforts to target the country's infrastructure. The Panzer S-1, thought to be worth in the region of $15 million, is designed for use against aircraft, cruise missiles, precision-guided munitions, and for supporting other air defense units against larger strikes. The head of the Center for Strategic Communications of the Southern Defense Forces of Ukraine, Dmitry Pletenchuk, said that the command post and drone control center were also destroyed besides, in the Kharkiv sector, the battle near Vovchansk has been going on since the beginning of the day. Ukrainian defense forces continue to strengthen the front line of defense. Recently, the defense forces have significantly displaced the Russians in the city of Volchansk. Military observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko believes that the occupiers may leave the city altogether, for this they don't have much time left. The Russians cannot maintain in an urban environment the ruins into which they turned Volchansk. And, let's just say, I think that they don't have much time left here to completely leave this populated area and start retreating to the border with the Russian Federation. The resource, as we see, is not enough. In fact, we have already had a month since they are trying to carry out these raids in the Kharkov region. The result, we see, is not only no different from what happened a week ago, two weeks ago, but even worse, Kovalenko said. First foreign instructor for use of F-16 arrived in Ukraine. The first foreign instructor in the operational use of F-16 fighters has already arrived in Ukraine, which should soon be handed over to partner countries. This is the first flight officer of the Greek Air Force, writes the Greek publication Defense Point. The Greek Air Force has gained vast experience and expertise in the operational use of the fighter in air-to-air -air missions, especially in close air combat, the Greek publication reported. On the 21st of August 2023, the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, while visiting Athens after his meeting with the Greek Prime Minister, Konstantinos Mitsotakis, announced the accession of Greece to the coalition. Today, we have an important result for the air coalition. Greece will participate in the training of our F-16 pilots, Zelensky stated. Journalists assume that the arrival of the Greek pilot in the Ukrainian capital is part of the F-16 Training Coalition Initiative, an international coalition established on July the 13th, 2023, at the NATO summit in Vilnius to train Ukrainian pilots and technical personnel to operate this type of fighter aircraft. Last fall, Denmark, Norway and the Netherlands committed to supplying Ukraine with F-16 fighter jets starting in 2025. Currently, the total number of pledged F-16s is about 80. Kyiv has been urgently requesting more advanced jets to strengthen its air force against Russia's larger and more technologically advanced fleet. At the same time, some Ukrainian allies, including the US, impose restrictions on the weapons they supply, stipulating that they must only be used within Ukraine and not for targeting Russian territory. Recently, the first Ukrainian pilots have completed F-16 fighter jet training at a military base in Arizona, with others soon to follow this summer. The first batch has graduated and other Ukrainian pilots are finishing their training here by the end of August. Arizona National Guard spokesperson Erin Hannigan told. Last month, Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo said his country's promised jets would be delivered to Kyiv by the end of the year.